Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat Goro figure. Probably the most anticipated figure in their line, out of all of them, other than maybe the first ones. Everybody's been pretty psyched about Goro since they showed him off. It's been a long time coming, and I have to say, it turned out pretty good. There's a couple small issues on this guy, but overall, it's a really solid release. And uh, I guess we should probably just dive into it. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about 24 centimeters to the top of his head. Add a little bit if you want to count his hair, but I'm not going to do that because it doesn't count. It's not fair. And that makes him about nine and a half inches, which is pretty big. If you're curious how he stacks up compared to a Mortal Kombat ninja, that's... That's what he comes up to. He comes up to his belly button just about a little bit higher, I guess. He's, he's huge. He's a really, really tall figure. If you want to see how he looks against Mr. Khan, still really huge. He is massive. Very large figure, which is cool. It's fun. Who doesn't like a big figure with multiple arms? Uh, overall, the paint job's pretty good. You see lots of shading throughout. Uh, lots of that speckling look to give him kind of uh, like the skin texturing and skin detail. And then we have his true spots and speckles all over his back and, you know, his hips in some places like that with that blackish, grayish, slightly greenish shading. Looks pretty cool. I like it. They did a really good job on his ankle wraps, I think. They look nice and dirty and kind of worn and used. The, the yin yang on his belt is very clean. Highly impressive. Only because black and red and white all easy to bleed together and to have trouble painting and they just nailed it it's very very clean it's a small detail but it makes a makes a big difference as far as his face goes it's pretty well done i'm okay with that it looks nice and clean uh, i will say the other face is not quite as clean but we'll talk about that in the accessories and then the fact that they added a little bit of shading for his his little gauntlets or bracers whatever you want to call those i like that it gives it a nice look nice appeal very pleased overall with the aesthetic Sculpt is pretty good. Uh, I do think they maybe sacrificed a little more than they needed to of the pec here to add this this range in. Uh, I don't know if they needed to cut away quite so much, but it's that's hardly a big deal. That's just something I noticed just because of the swoopiness of the cut. That's all, it's nothing, nothing really to worry about. It's pretty standard for what they've been doing anyway. I guess here in comparison, you can see how they kept much of his pec in shape and that leads to a much beefy look, much more beefy look, as opposed to taking it away. It's not a big deal by any means, but it's the kind of thing you notice when you're doing this kind of, kind of review. Uh, one other thing I noticed, which is kind of interesting, only because I was expecting for them to do it basically the same way they have before, in that he was going to have a solid lower torso, and then maybe for, like they have a kind of a plastic tree inside the squishy part normally that holds the arms. Uh, I was expecting them to have a tree in here, and then that connect to another tree up here, but instead, this is all solid, so these arms are connected to the solid torso, and these are connected like they do normally. So. Uh, that's, I'm not saying it's good or bad, just it's interesting that they did it that way. I was expecting a lot more squishy stuff going on, and there isn't. So I guess it could have been, you could have had better range out of these lower shoulders if they did go this route. You can see you can do this with the upper shoulder, and with the lower one you can't. So I guess it could have been more range that way, but this is still fine. It still works, no problem. I wonder why, though. I'm just curious. From an engineering standpoint, I wonder why they might have done it that way. Plus, he would have had less uh, weight up top if he did it the other way. Eh, anyway, it's just a curiosity. Very cool looking figure nonetheless. Let's go ahead and talk about the accessories. We do have the two different heads. The one neutral head, and then the one where his teeth are showing. The teeth aren't painted perfectly. Mine have kind of like a weird stripe of yellow going across the middle, but otherwise it looks good. We have two different ponytails. One that goes straight down, which I can't see myself ever using because it lays just along his back. And then we have the one with a little bit of an S curve to it, which is pretty nice. We have a total of three sets of hands. The one set of fist hands, one set of gripping hands, and then one set of looser kind of grapply type hands. And then we have his two green fist fireball thingies. Although it's interesting to me because when I looked it up, uh, the fist part's supposed to be normal skin colored. So I'm wondering if there is a version where they're supposed to be all green. But either way, they look cool. There's nice shading on them, so that's fine. And there is a display stand which can hold up one of those at a time. Or you can attach the clip part to it, and I guess it could support the figure a little bit. 
And that's it. Let's go ahead and dive into the articulation though. Other than the second set of arms, it's pretty standard. Uh, the head's on a double ball peg, so I can just pull it off and show you. The hair's on a peg, by the way, so you can rotate that around. But the, the double ball peg connects deep into the body so that it can lean side to side. Although this whole piece is pretty floaty, so it tends to shift rather than actually have the neck bend. But it's okay, it works fine. And then of course you have the peg for the head itself. Shoulders are connected on a big ball peg to the center of the body with these floating pieces to hide the articulation. Then we have our ball hinge, which has really solid range. No problem at all moving the, those guys. Really, really nice. No super stiff joints, no super loose joints. Very pleased uh, with the quality control on this last batch of figures. I will note the arms don't go better than 90 degrees, which he's pretty bulky, so it's understandable. These are floating pieces, by the way, and the hands pop off no problem, no joint issues. We do have our ball peg with a ball hinge combination to give him a little bit of extra range, so that's pretty nice. Works well enough. You don't get a ton of range on a bulky guy like this, but it's okay. Then we have a double ball peg, which moves this entire upper body all the way around, and it does move around pretty well. And you don't get too much gapping because his soft booby piece it moves around nicely and you can kind of shift it into place to hide the joints. So that's pretty good. I like that. Now these guys do have a ball peg that the arm connects to the body with, but there's almost no range. So you're just going to use your ball hinge to pose it for the most part. And they're, they're a lot more limited than the upper arms, as you might expect, but they still, they still work pretty well. Swivel's fine, double jointed elbow. The arms themselves are the same, so that's okay. And then for the lower torso, which I was kind of expecting to have problems, uh, just because you have to have it pretty stiff in order for this much weight up above it to work. It's actually not too stiff. It works nicely. You have really good range out of it. And then the belt is a soft floating piece and the crotch is a soft floating piece. They're two separate pieces. So you really have no problems at all with this guy. I'm very, very pleased with that. For the hips, pretty darn far out. A little bit better than even Chun-Li. So, I mean, that's... That's good. I wasn't expecting that on this guy. So very happy with that. This one's a little tight though, as you can hear. That worries me a little. Bringing it forward, we do hear a lot of potential shredding, but look at that range. He kicks high. Look at that, that is nice. And then you can bring the leg back. Also, really good range. It's tighter than I'd like. And based on how this is designed, I'm not sure how I could get any uh, lube in there to keep it from breaking so you be careful with that kind of thing but it shouldn't be too much of a problem because it doesn't get that tight and then for the knees we have pretty standard a little bit better than 90 nothing crazy there but no super tight joints or anything now here's the one thing that's a that's a big problem for me and it's not it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing at the same time the ankles have almost no range at all I think there's still a standard hinge in there and then a swivel but it, I can't see it and it doesn't want to move. And that's a problem because he's very top heavy and it is hard to balance him. I, I did force his feet forward a little bit and I kept him from falling over when I stood him up, but that was in a mostly straight pose. So it was, it was, it will be problematic to pose him in any kind of dynamic pose without some kind of support. So be aware the ankles are almost non-existent. Then you do have a really big toe hinge, but that's not gonna be helpful since you can't lean him on the toes exclusively so like if I force it really hard it looks like he's gonna be able to stand but that's as far forward as I can get him to lean based on his ankles so and you don't want a character to be standing with his legs fully extended that looks goofy you want a little bit of bend in the knee and not being able to do that is kind of a bummer unless they end up loosening up and I can do it but as of right now I can't really get the ankles to work with me so the ankles are definitely a problem maybe a little hair dryer action will uh, loosen those up and afford some better range but that's really the only big issue I have with this guy. Everything else is just curiosity or question, but this guy's really, really nice release. I can't imagine any Mortal Kombat fan or Goro fan or action figure fan not being pleased with this figure. The ankles are definitely an issue, don't get me wrong, mostly because they're the point of contact with which the figure can stand. So that's gonna be a problem. But if you can figure out a way to hold him up, then it's really good. That is a big problem, don't get me wrong, but the figure is awesome otherwise. So 
you can decide for yourself what you want to do with that information. I still like the figure, obviously, so that should maybe help you decide if you're going to like it. I don't know. You guys can figure it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. That helps me out a whole bunch. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to do it because I do have new videos up just about every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.